So uh, I haven't got any water bottles, but I can hang in there. I need some free hospital food. Um, uh, Holly, that was spectacular. Like if the rest of the class of 2008 is like you, like you'll go far. That was great. Um, I am delighted to be here. Uh, thank you very much. I'm actually humbled and, uh, by the uh, invite to do this. And I want to say to you, who are just about graduated, the finish line's in sight. Uh, well done. You deserve a round of applause. I'm particularly honored to be here tonight um, to deliver this last lecture from an alumnus point of view and to celebrate this milestone with you and with my daughter Nadine and many of her friends who are members of the great class of 2008 or possibly 2009. We're not quite sure of that yet. <laughs> Uh, I graduated from this university 32 years ago. It was a big day for me. I came from uh, Union, Ontario, a population of 150. I was the first person in my family, that's my extended family, two parents, one sister, 30 cousins, six aunts, 10 uncles, who had gone to university or had done anything, any type of education past high school. I came to Guelph from Brock University, uh, which I had left after nine months, because frankly, I was bored there. Uh, I arrived here not having to give much thought about what I would actually do or where I would actually live. So I couch surfed for, couch surfed for a little while, had a bit of an altercation with a bike gang, and then decided to quit school. And I did. I quit. Seriously, my parents were not pleased. They were convinced I'd never make anything of myself, but I quit and I moved home, worked as a driver at a psychiatric hospital for about a year. And then finally, after a very brief stint at Western, now I know what you're thinking, but everyone has allowed one mistake. Um, uh, I, I was called back to Guelph, and, uh, where I graduated in 1976 with a degree in political science and philosophy, and had no idea what to do next. It was all a little bit overwhelming, as no doubt it is for you. When I sat where you are, are today, uh, looking ahead to graduation, I honestly didn't know what I wanted to do. I was thinking of social work, I was thinking of law, I was thinking of teaching, I was thinking about health administration. The only things I didn't consider were anything that required sciences, because I've never taken a science class. Um, and I can't add or subtract at all. Um, but in the end, I kind of stumbled into health administration. A man I worked with told me about the program. It sounded interesting and didn't require any science. And it had the added bonus of being one year shorter than a law degree. So my point is, it's okay to not know what you want to do with the rest of your life as you sit there today. It's okay not to have a plan. Along the way, you will find lots of people willing to help you. People who will offer you good advice, interesting and unexpected opportunities. And sometimes, not having a plan means that you're more open to taking advantage of changing opportunities that you would never have had otherwise. Over the past few years, I've had a chance to get to know many of the students at Guelph, whether through my daughter Nadine and her friends, or at some more formal university events. But I didn't know until I began to prepare for this lecture that 70% of the students at Guelph are involved in volunteer work, and that's twice, twice the national average. Add to this the hundreds of uh, Guelph students that go from here to international study programs, and the 700 plus students that come to Guelph from 100 countries around the world, these numbers are a testament to the uniqueness of the students at Guelph and to all of you here in this room. I believe that people are called to places, and I believe that people are called to the University of Guelph. I know I was, and I think I still am. I suspect, in many respects, some of you are as well, sometimes called to places, not necessarily initially, but later as you get to know them. When I was at Guelph, people didn't have heirs, People were genuine in their own way. They probably had some significant differences from each other, but they had a lot more in common. And from my observations over the past few years, as a parent and as a board member, it doesn't seem to have changed very much at all. In January, I went to a, an event hosted by the university. Guelph was announcing an international partnership with the Kenrod School in Brazil. The event was held on the 54th floor of the TD Tower in downtown Toronto. I talked to a number of students at that event, they may even be here, I told them to come because I wanted the audience to be full. Um, but one particular discussion st stood out for me. I talked to a young woman from Wallstown. 
which is about five kilometers from Union, just a bit smaller than Union. This young woman told me she was going to Brazil this spring with the university to research methods and on improving water quality and, and soil quality. And yet that evening, she was just as excited about being on the 54th floor of the TV center because she'd never been in a building that tall. When I heard that, I smiled inside. Uh, that's, here's why. In 1976, when I graduated from Guelph, I had never heard of globalization. I had never been in an airplane. I had never been further from home in Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario. I would never, could never have conceived of a time when I would live in a place as big as Toronto, or actually go to a business meeting in a place called Hong Kong. Yet today, the world is so small, and the opportunities are so great. Today, going to Brazil is an opportunity your school provides. Just imagine the endless possibilities that are out there beyond this university. I expect that the list of opportunities available to you now seems pretty overwhelming. And given your global horizons and the list of challenges facing the world, these may seem endless problems. But Guelph has prepared you well. Whether building schools in Peru, researching ways to improve water quality in Brazil, or simply being there for someone at home going through a tough time, you've already changed lives and you've already begun to set up your own personal legacy. Tonight's theme of changing lives and improving life is very fitting for you and your classmates. I thought a lot about this theme in preparing these remarks. I don't presume to be an expert on it. Certainly, I hope over the years I've touched people's lives in a positive way, but I haven't got lots of answers or a roadmap uh, to help you make your impact on the world. For each of you, your experiences and your lessons you take from them are your best guide. With that in mind, though, I thought I would share with you some experiences that have inspired me, changed me, and guided me over the years. That's what I, that's what I can. I can promise you some publishable pearls of wisdom. But I have three stories that I want to share with you to add to your perspective on people, on yourself, and your view of the world, and maybe provide you something lasting from this last lecture. The first point I hope to hope you'll take away tonight is it's not as it's not so important what you do as the way you live your life and the passion and the compassion you bring to it. University of Guelph was a great experience for me. First of all, it seemed like one endless party. But it was also a place that I was introduced to a much bigger world than the one I know in Union, a town like many others, where everyone looked the same, talked the same, and thought the same. Guelph exposed me to some incredible friendships and diverse people, including professors who didn't just teach the curriculum, but who were committed to unleashing the potential of their students. People like Professor John McMurtry, now retired, whose approach to education and whose willingness to listen and engage with the students made me feel bigger and older than I was. People like Abby Hoffman, a four-time Olympic competitor, one of Canada's most famous middle distance runners, who somehow grasped that I wasn't understanding Marxism at all, and who took it upon herself to teach me some things to help me earn my credits in other ways. These are the moments that I remember about my years at Guelph, the fun, the extraordinary people, the passion for teaching, and their kindness. When I left campus, I didn't know where I was headed. Even my sense of home had changed. It was no longer human, but I wasn't very sure where it was. What I did know, or at least what I sensed, and what I think is one of the most important things that I learned during my years at Guelph, was this. The question of what you do with your life is not nearly as important as the question of how you live your life and the passion and compassion that you bring to it. Take Mahatma Gandhi, for example. He gave up a law career devoted to devote his life to justice and peace. But he's not the only person that's done that. There's thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands of people who have done that, who have campaigned for justice and peace in our time or their time. Yet arguably, his legacy lies not in what he did, but in the way he chose to live his life, in his passion, his compassion, and his aspiration to make a difference.